Hello, if you are just joining me, welcome to the replay. I'll be with you in just a moment. Hey, Cindy, I'll be right with you. Okay, all set. Hi, everybody. In case you're wondering what I'm doing when I say I'll be with you in just a minute, I'm sharing uh, my live to other groups that might be interested in hearing about Chaka Tours. So hello, hello, and welcome, welcome. Um, if we haven't met before, my name is Susan Tapley, and I am an independent designer with Chalk Couture. I'm also a team leader, so if you see something that you like here today and you think, oh my gosh, I could do what that poor girl does, you can do it too. Get, I'll get you some information about joining my designer team if you're interested. So hello, Cindy. How are you doing tonight? So today we're going to be working, hi, Leslie, we're going to be working with a transfer called Fa La La. And um, I'm gonna show you this transfer. It's a really, really large one. And we're not gonna be using all of it, but we're gonna use parts of it. So this is what it looks like. This is um, an E-size transfer. It's the largest size transfer Chaka Tour has. And it's got four beautiful Christmas trees. It's got fa -la -la. It's got mittens. It's got, um, I was gonna say a dinosaur. It's a moose. <laughs> Kind of a quilt pattern, a bunny, and some border stripes down here. Really, really fun and very, very versatile. So um, if you like this uh, transfer, let me know. I do have four in stock locally. Otherwise, we can get them right for you on my website, which is listed right here. So I'm going to take this apart. And let me switch my camera over so you can see my hands as well as my face. Oops, not that one, <laughs> this one. Okay, let's see if I can do that properly this time. There we go, picture in picture. All right, let me move that, there we go. And I'll move that out of the way for now. If you guys need my website again, just ask. So um, here's this really, really big transfer. We're gonna be using the four trees and we're also gonna be using the moose and the bunny. So you guys, I'm gonna, tell you these cute little things right here would be adorable on our little our little um yeah i think i have any chocolate chips like this size you put them right on here make some ornaments with it our gift tags oh my gosh you can do so much with just these little ones alone and these can be used any time of the year they're really not specifically snowflakes i don't know why but this one sort of looks like it but the rest of them absolutely not so that's what we're going to be using tonight. So I'm going to cut this apart. How are you doing today, Leslie? You feeling better? I was thinking about you again. Oh, okay. So today we're going to be using some kind of, kind of traditional colors, but I'm looking for um, sort of a woodsy look with this. And I'll show you the surface that we're going to be using in just a second. But before we do that, I am going to cut these apart. And I am using um, Chalk Couture scissors. And you guys, you might think scissors are all the same, but they really, really aren't. These are very sharp. They're large enough so that you can cut through these transfers really, really quickly. And they're non-stick. So if you're cutting something that happens to be sticky, like the back of these transfers, um, you're not going to find that they get stuck to your scissors. So let me just cut these apart. Don't have to really worry about staying on the line. It doesn't matter, but... I try to be careful. I do try. Make this a little smaller so we don't have much as much on my table here. So um, I think this weekend I'm going to cut down my Christmas tree. Doesn't mean it'll be up right away because I don't. I want it to last until Christmas. But we tagged a tree back in I think it was September. 
No, it wasn't September. It was a little later than that. What the heck was that? Feels like it was a holiday weekend. I don't remember. But anyway, we tagged one. And uh, we're going to go and cut it down. Because it's supposed to be really warm this weekend. Which means we should also probably put up the Christmas lights. Not a bad plan. Do you guys have your Christmas lights up yet? Leslie, I know you have your tree up. I can't compete with you. <laughs> All right. I am thinking I might actually use this part of this strip too. So I'm just going to cut it off. Might as well just cut it off, right? And... All right, you guys, some of you have your Christmas lights on your house. Or if you even use them. Some people don't. I usually wait till Thanksgiving to decorate in my house. But I don't know. This year, I just... I'm feeling like doing it sooner and it might be because I've gotten a lot of my Christmas shopping done and I'm really happy about it. Really, really, really. All right, I'm going to put that over here. Just put it down there with the bag. So I may or may not use this part of it. We'll see. But I know I'm going to use the trees, the moose, and the bunny. No Christmas yet after Thanksgiving. Okay. Must be a New England thing because I hear people all over the country that I work with mostly that have their trees up and decorated and they're raring to go. It's 2020, so why not, right? Why the heck not? Yeah, I have just a little bit more shopping to do. I'm so excited. I didn't wait for Black Friday. I probably should have, but you know. I'm afraid that things are going to run out or it's going to take too long to ship. So I just got it done. And I'm pretty happy with what I got. All right. So I have four trees here and they are slightly different from each other. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to number the trees one through four. So one, two, three, and four. So I'm just going to flip them and write tree one through four. I can't tell you why until I stop writing. <laughs> I can't write and talk at the same time, apparently. Tree three. And tree four. And then while I'm at it, I'm also going to write bunny on the back. And not dinosaur, but moose on the back of this one. Okay, so the reason that I write on my transfers, if you are watching this on replay or catch me halfway through, is because when you're working with a bunch of transfers like I am tonight, it's really hard to remember which transfer goes on which carrier sheet. The important thing to know about Chalk Couture transfers is they're reusable. So you can use these over and over again. And after you're done using them, you wash them off in lukewarm water. I like to use something called a board eraser, which I don't have handy at the moment, but it's a little white um, kind of spongy disc that cleans the transfers beautifully. Um, those of you who have used them before can attest to the fact that they are worth their weight in gold. They're very affordable too. So once you've washed your transfers, you dry them sticky side up, lay them on top of something absorbent like a towel or a fuzzing a cloth. And when they're dry, you replace them on these carrier sheets that they come on. So the, the side that I write on is a matte finish. The side that they're attached to is very shiny and slick like a sticker would be. And that's the side you always want to reattach your transfer to. All right, excuse me. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's what I was going to tell you about that. <laughs> I get distracted easily. So I'm going to show you what my surface looks like. Put the moose in the, where the bunny go? A little one. Shoot, oh, there it is. Thought it hopped off the table. Okay, so what we're going to be doing is a box that I've had around for years. I actually bought this when I worked in a department store. Um, I don't even know when, in the, in the 1980s. But I use it when I'm like storing like uh, receipts from Christmas or Christmas lists or whatever. But I've never really used it for anything more than that. So I'm going to decorate this up. And I was thinking that it would be a great place to store those really 
special sentimental ornaments that you have or those fine breakables that you might not want to put in the big box with the other things. You could use it to put a gift in and, and present it to someone and this can be part of the gift or you can just use it like it is as a decoration. So this is going to be fun. I'm excited to do this one tonight with you guys. So I have, I, I have painted this white. Um, I'm pretty sure you can still buy these. This one's made out of like a, a, a heavy cardboard. I'm pretty sure you can still purchase these at you know your craft stores. But even if you can't, you can use you can do this kind of technique on anything. Um, I used to have a wooden cheese box that looked a lot like this that you could also use, and that would be fun to use. So what my plan is is to go around the all around the edges with the Christmas trees. And as I said, they all are a little bit different, so I'm just going to place them all the way around. I'm going to do a light colored layer first followed by a darker color so that you get some depth and it looks sort of like a forest. Does that make sense? I hope so. All right, so um, considering these are brand new transfers that I have found to be very, very sticky lately, I'm gonna remove the, the transfer from the carrier sheet like so. And yeah, it's not too, too bad. I've had some that were crazy sticky. And I'm gonna fuzz this on my fuzzing towel. And what this does is it just picks up a little bit of lint from the surface of the towel, which softens the adhesive so it's not quite as sticky. You don't want them terribly sticky. All right, so I know that the lid comes down about an inch um, into the, the box. So I'm gonna keep the tree, try to keep the tree so that it's not quite at that one inch mark, just under. So this is tree number one, so I'm going to pop this one on and just rub down the area of the tree. I already got something stuck in there. Okay. Alright, so that tree has been stuck down. And then I'm going to get tree number two and fuzz that one. I need something to... There, I need a kickstand. Here's tree number two. We're going to line that up next to it. I usually rub them down oh, just a couple of times. Uh, considering I'm using a paper surface that's been painted, it should be okay if it's a little bit sticky, but you want to be super careful that it's not too sticky so that you can't get it off. So then I'm going to put this one on. And I'm just going to line it up next to the other one, but I do want them to be slightly different heights. So right about there. There's no science to this, really. I'm just going to work my way right around this whole container. Now let's get number three. Oops, that's four. So Leslie, my daughter says that the kids are not going to be going to, back to school yet. She said uh, she got a, an email from the principal today, or the superintendent maybe, saying that they had changed their minds and they were not going to open schools next week. Her kids are not happy. <laughs> they really want to go, and that's sad. All right, there's number three. One more. And here comes number four. If you guys are just popping in, be sure to say hello. Tell me where you're from. Also, if you wouldn't mind, please S-H-A-R-E this video with your friends and family so they can see this cool stuff called Chuck Couture. All right, the last one is going here. I'm going to go a little higher with this one. It doesn't really matter if it's inside of that. As long as you can see there's a tree there. So obviously I don't have enough to go all the way around. So what we're going to do is we're going to chalk the first one. And then I'm going to move it over here and chalk it again. All right. So the colors that I'm going to be using are Dune, Camel, and Shimmer Olive. So we've got some really soft, pretty colors here. 
And I have some ribbon that I'm going to put on the top too. I think it's going to look really pretty. <clears throat> I know, not for a while. All those poor kids staying home with their parents. Okay, now you're ready. So I have stirred this one up just a little while ago. I knew it was a little thick, but you always want to stir up your chalk paste. Make sure they're about the consistency of cake batter. If they feel like they are thicker than that, just spray a little bit of distilled water into the into the jar and stir it until it's the it's a nice creamy uh, yogurt like kind of consistency, like so. All right, so I'm going to be using a mini squeegee to put the paste on here. All of these trees are going to be the same color, and then I'm going to go around a, another time and <laughs> use the green shimmer. I'm trying to stay in camera here for you. All right, let me move over a little bit. There we go. All right, so what you're going to do with your paste, um, first of all, anywhere that you see white showing through this blue transfer is actually a silk screen, um, and that is going to give you all of the detail that you see in our designs. You would never be able to do that if you had a stencil. Um, and, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, and these can be used many, many times. The chalk paste that I'm using is water soluble. It goes on wet, dries hard in just a matter of minutes, um, but it is washable. So if you're using it on a non-porous surface like a chalkboard, windows, metal, or glass, you can wash it right off whenever you want to. We are using a surface that is porous. I would consider this to be porous as paper, um, so I would not try to wash it off. If anything, you could spray it and seal it if you want to. All right, so I'm just taking a scoop of that paste and I'm gonna smooth it all over the design Making sure you can see here. Smoothing it over the design. And as soon as you have it covered, you're going to scrape off all of the excess and put it back into the jar. This is super, super easy to do, you guys. Okay, I got all that extra uh, squeegeed off. Now I'm going to pull this transfer up. While it's still wet, make sure you pull it off. There is my cute little Christmas tree. Now, if I can get this untangled in here, stick it to the other transfers a little bit. Okay, I got it. I'm gonna move it over. I smudged it a little bit too. It's all right, put something there. Okay, so I'm gonna put this over here next to the fourth one. And do one more with this transfer. Sorry, I'm with, I'll move my camera in just a second. Okay, so I'm just replacing it in a different area right here. Push that down a little bit. Make sure we get all the bumps and bubbles out of it. If you have bumps and bubbles, you can have a bleed. So we're going to make sure that's nice and tight and go back in and do the same thing. I should only need to use this twice if I calculated correctly. Okay, I'm going to scrape off the excess and go right back over. If you have never ever chalked before, um, write never in the comments so that I know that you are brand new at chalking. All right, there's number one. I'm gonna dry that up a little bit. I'm gonna be using a heat tool to dry this. I wanted to move that transfer really, really quickly from one side to the other so that I could paste this while the paste was, um, while the paste was still wet on the transfer. So I'm just hitting it with a heat tool here. It should just take a minute. You could also use a hair dryer if you wanted to. You can see how cute it's starting to look. this side again. Just hit that with a little bit. I did smudge it a little bit right there, but no big deal. You can fix just about anything. So if you are using a dryer on your transfers, just be super careful not to heat up your transfer itself because it will warp it out of proportion and you'll have a mess. And you will, ugh, I'm going to 
sticking together a little bit here. All right, we're going to be having a nice little um, transfer mess here. Bear with me. Okay, got it. All right, so now I'm going to do tree number two, just the same way. Scoop up that paste and cover your transfer with the paste. This is an awkward angle I'm working at, you guys. I'm sorry about that. Scrape off the excess. When you've scraped it well, you should be able to see your design underneath it. Doesn't always work depending on the colors that you're using. Like if you're using a teal paste, it's really hard to do it and be able to see through it. I'm gonna pull it this way instead this time. There we go. And then I'm gonna move it to the other side if I can get it unstuck from my thumb. And I'm gonna dry this real quick. So I know this looks sort of subtle, but wait till we add some more green to this. It's going to be really, really pretty. Okay, so this one's going to go back over here, right about there. I'm trying to vary the heights of the trees just a little bit. I'm going to end up with chalk all over my hands. What's new, right? All right, here we go. And cover that transfer just like before. And scrape it off. Doesn't get much easier, guys. All right. And we're done with number two. So we're Working our way around here. I actually might need to use them again. So as you can see, this stuff dries really, really quickly. Um, you can use a hair dryer to dry it or just let it air dry. But because I'm live, I'm trying to do this a little faster than I might if I was by myself. Let's see. We're going to start with our number three now. This is actually really nice to chalk on, this painted paper. It was just brown, like a paper, uh, paper bag color when I started. You can see the inside of it. It was that color. And, um, yeah, I've had it for such a long time and never really did anything with it. I must have had plans at one, one time, once upon a time. I just didn't get to it. All right. Oh, they seem to curl up on my thumb when I pull them off for some reason. There we go. Let's dry that. Oh, yes, definitely on a lampshade. I just saw someone do a lampshade. They took the um, the Santa. It's got the Santa Claus with the reindeer. I'm not really sure of the name of it at the moment, but they chalked on the inside of the shade, so you couldn't see the design until you turned the light on. And when you did, it was Santa with the sleigh and the reindeer. It's really, really cute. Absolutely can do shades. <laughs> Shut the front door. I love that. <laughs> okay, we're working our way around. I'm going to put this number three back on. I'm trying to stay in your view, guys. It's a little tricky with this round barrel. Okay, so this one should go right about here. I'm going to go a little shorter with this guy. Yeah, I might need to go around again with a couple. Oh, not all of them. Probably not all four. Okay. Here we go. Number 
three. This is this is so quick and easy, you guys. Cheyenne, where are you from? Okay, that one's good. Give it a pull. Ooh, that was leaning a little bit. <laughs> it happens, right? It sure does. Okay. We are on the fourth tree. And it looks like we're going to have to add a couple more in. We'd make it around there with two two times but maybe three we shall see I'm trying to get any more crooked trees right Arizona I was out there last January it was beautiful I was out there for a leadership conference and I was shocked to learn how many citrus trees grew there. I don't know why. I thought all the oranges and lemons grew in Florida, but oh, no, they don't. <laughs> They're from Arizona. this but you can see how it's coming out so far let me turn it this way so it's not upside down we're getting our trees all around the edges we're gonna go in and put some green ones in there too don't you worry Savannah will be much more fun I'm not sure I'm gonna go I'm, I'm kind of on the fence about going to Savannah I want to but I don't know I just don't know I'm a little nervous about traveling right now all right, so let's put this one. We're going to go back in with number one. Number one. Shane, are you going to Savannah? We're having our, our leadership conference this year in Savannah, which is, sounds wonderful because I know it'll be really nice and warm. And I really miss seeing all my chalk friends. Um, I didn't get to see him this summer at our conference that was canceled, but I will see some of them when we go on our incentive trip. Okay, okay I think I need two more trees. Two more trees. You are too. You are going on the trip. I just got a little piece right here that we don't want there. There we go. Fixed it. All right, let's go in with number two. And then there should be one more after this. And that will be it for these color trees. But we're going to put more. Trying to get them straight. I think I have one that's a little bit crooked. It's all right though. Yeah, I, I, uh, I'm having a really hard time saying no to that conference too, Cheyenne. I'm, I'm really surprised that it's even being planned, honestly. <coughs> Excuse me heat's on and it is dry in here. All right, one more tree in this color. Then we're going to clean these up and add another layer all the way around in the shimmer olive color. This should be super pretty. Okay. And you guys just wait, you get to see my exquisite bow making skills in a few minutes. I'm getting better. I've been working on it. 
I don't know how exquisite they are. I'm just kidding. Okay, excess goes back in the jar. And pull. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to roll this all the way around so you can see that we have trees going all the way around our, um, our box. Super cute. So I'm going to let that dry for a second. And I'm going to show you a quick way to wash your transfers if you're not at the sink like I am right now. Close up my jar. I want, want to keep your jars of chalk paste closed as much as possible. Because exposure to the air is what makes them harden up. So if you can clean the edges of your jar and the lid, um, that really helps to keep it, keep it from drying out. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a way that you can clean your transfers without having water handy. Of course, I dropped what I needed. Bear with me. All right, so what I'm using are our... our, our Oh, disinfectant wipes. I know, we have to be really careful using them. <laughs> I haven't used very many lately, but for this project, we are going to. So I'm just gonna clean the transfer using a disinfectant wipe. I don't have to worry about the whole transfer getting clean, mostly just the screen area for now. I wanna have that clear and clean so that I can go over it with a different color. And if I don't clean it out now, the, the chalk that's dried on it will um, make, make it so that you don't get a clean image. So I'm just cleaning that up a little bit. Wipe it over, wipe it down again. I think I'm gonna add a little bit of distilled water to this one. Oh my gosh, I love the shimmer colors too. I think everybody loves the shimmer. I especially love that they stay so nice and creamy. You don't have to put too much muscle into them. Yeah, this worked a little better when I sprayed a little water on it. Okay, that looks good. So I'm not soaking these, they're not getting soaking wet, so they won't be, they won't take long to dry either. So I'm just gonna do one at a time. Thanks for bearing with me. Hanging out with you guys on Thursday night. Can't think of anything better. Love. <laughs> I have um, a lady, I don't think she's here tonight, but my friend Kathy, who uh, loves shimmer. Everything she's done with me, I think, was shimmery. She just loves it. Can't blame her. might take a couple of wipes. We'll sacrifice them. <laughs> there. Not too bad. Oops. Okay, we're going to let these dry for a minute. Oh, yeah, I've had some chocks that were a little bit hard to to use too. We have to deal with frozen paste where I live. Okay, a couple more of these to clean. So speaking of that, if you happen to be in the cold north like I am and you order chalk paste and you know that your delivery is coming, try to get your chalk paste in the house ASAP. It does not like to be frozen. So you guys know the drill, if it does get hard and it's frozen, especially let it come to room temperature in the jar. Don't open it though. Let it come to room temperature and then stir it really, really well if you can. If it's gotten really hard, um, try adding distilled water a little bit at a time um, until it comes to the right consistency. If it still doesn't work, here's a trick you can try get in the microwave for just a couple seconds at a time, stirring in between. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I don't know why it does sometimes and not others, but it's the truth. It's what happens. Okay. That. I'm going to 
almost done with this one. One more to go. Okay, that looks pretty good. I will give these a thorough cleaning when I'm at my when I'm at my sink later. Okay. It did help to spray it with distilled. If you do this one, it's still very, very wet. It comes off easily. some designers that just use um, disinfectant wipes to clean their transfers. Um, I kind of stepped away from that because they're really hard to get here in Massachusetts. Really hard. Every now and then I hear Costco has them and by the time I get there they're gone. They are gone. One more time, we should be good to go. Okay, so the only other thing I'm gonna do is give this a quick wipe with a paper towel just to dry it a little bit more than I than it will air drying. My table's wet, so I better dry that too, right? There we go. That should be drying in just a few minutes. And while that's drying, I'm going to work on the lid a little bit. This already feels pretty dry. Okay. I know this is a little boring to watch, but it's got to be done, guys. Sorry. <laughs> All right. We are done. Done, done, done. All right. So what I'm thinking about doing with the lid, there's a couple things I'm thinking about doing. First of all, I was thinking about going around this edge here with the borders that come with this transfer. So the one I was thinking of using was this one right here. It's sort of, it kind of looks like a cross between a quilt pattern and a snowflake, but I'm going to call it a, a snowflake just because it's wintery and Christmassy. And go all the way around there with the shimmer olive. What do you think? Think it'll look nice? This is all one piece. I'm surprised I didn't cut it into a few. So I'm going to fuzz this up. Make sure I put my borders on there. And as always, remove it from the transfer. The carrier sheet, rather. I get so this time of night, I can't even talk straight anymore the way it is. So we'll fuzz that a couple of times really well. My fuzzing towel is beat. Feels like there's not very much fuzz on there anymore. If you don't have a fuzzing towel at home, you can also use a bath towel. You can use your t-shirt. You can use your jeans. Anything that will pick up a little bit of lint will help um, soften your adhesive so it's not quite as sticky. These are pretty darn sticky. Okay, good enough. So I'm gonna get the top of the top of the box here and see if I can center this on top of the border. Ooh, this is gonna be tricky. Actually, it's not too bad because I can see through it with the light shining like it is. It ain't that bad. I think this is going to look cool, don't you? Okay, 
gosh. Well, I don't think I would be decorating every gift box that I have <laughs> for Christmas in this way, but you certainly could. Um, but maybe some special ones. Maybe baby. I think there would be an awesome storage for heirloom Christmas ornaments or anything like that. So I'm going to rub that down really, really well. Get rid of all those bumps, bubbles, and folds, which I have one right here. So pull that up. Pull that tighter. All the way around. Looks like I'm pretty centered. I'm using my light to see through the transfer so I know that I'm putting it down in the right spot here. That's pretty good. Come on now. All right, ready? Let's get that olive. Shimmer olive. <laughs> Ugly Christmas sweater print. Yes. I think if you use it all together, it might look that way, but I'm hoping it doesn't. So, speaking of ugly sweaters, who has been to an ugly sweater Christmas party? Anybody? <laughs> all right. We actually had a family ugly Christmas sweater party one year. It was hysterical. Some of the stuff that people came up with was brilliant. Like my husband glued um, artificial Christmas candies all over his Christmas sweater. I don't even remember what mine was. I don't remember. But it was fun. Last year, um, we had everyone come to our house with their Christmas pajamas on for the day, which was also fun. Some of the people didn't appreciate it, but whatever. It was cool. The pictures are great. <laughs> okay, so again, I'm just smoothing this shimmer olive chalk paste all over the border here. This has a different kind of a texture to it. It feels a little bit gritty. Uh, one of the things I love about... Oh, this is a little crooked right here. I'm going to move it while I still can. Uh, one of the things I like about using the shimmer paste is that it doesn't dry quite as quickly as chalk paste, regular chalk paste does. Get a little bit more time, not a lot. Don't get too comfortable with having it on. Um, but not as quick as ink. Not as doesn't take as long as ink, I should say. That takes quite a bit longer. So you still have to work kind of quickly, but you get a little bit more time. Just a little. Okay, I've got that covered. And I've been scraping as I went for the most part. That looks pretty good. I'm gonna peel that off. Cross your fingers. See how straight I got it. Looks really kind of cute, doesn't it? <laughs> All right, I'm just gonna attach the transfer to my table while I dry this for a second. Because you know what happens if you don't dry it. Can you see that pattern? It's not perfectly straight, but that's okay, right? <laughs> Who cares? Nobody will know but you and me. So if you're using a heat tool like this, keep it moving. Don't let it sit still in one spot. I've actually seen chalk bubble because I didn't move it fast enough. So keep it moving. You also want to be careful of your skin because you can burn your skin with it as well. Probably not a good idea to let the kids do it. <laughs> Hair dryers are safer. Check that. It does look like ribbon. Okay, it's dry. So now I gotta go back in and try to get this approximately in the same place. 
lining up the design that was there before it. And let's work our way around to the other. Maybe not. Okay, that's in the spot. I'm gonna look like the Grinch covered in green chalk after this. Yep, I'm gonna wait for my hands for a second. It really does look like a ribbon, I like it. Okay, we're getting there. Sort of. A little bit of a smear right here. Look at that. Okay. Thought this would be a little easier to get around, but not too bad. Just when I think I got it in the right spot, I'm not. It's not. All right. I think I need to work my way to maybe smaller sections. Yeah, that's better. Okay, I think we've got it. Looks like I might have stretched it a little bit when I pulled it off. So it's not quite straight, but it's all good. All right, clean those hands again. And we are gonna finish going around. Okay. Get that squeegee going again. Uh, now, why isn't it sticking? Okay, there we go. Such concentration, huh? This box is a little bigger around than I thought it would be. Okay, we are at the bottom. I'm gonna scrape off the excess. Look in the jar. And then the peel and reveal. Well, that didn't come out quite as good as the last one. Wow, really didn't didn't even stick well. All right, so that might be because it dried on the transfer, in which case I'll go back later and fix that. So there's a little bit of a mistake on the back. We'll just put that on the back side, right? <laughs> okay, let me dry that up and then we'll go back to work on the trees. I'm a mess. Okay, ah, geez. I do, I look like the Grinch. She's a mean one, Mrs. Grinch. Sorry, sometimes I sing in my lives. Can't help myself. All right, we'll put this aside for now. We'll get the box back out. It looks pretty good though. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back in with the trees and kind of space them out in between where they were before. So this way we have a couple different color trees. There's four. Three, two, and one. Okay, so we're gonna start with number one. I have no idea where I started the first time, so I'm just gonna stand up here and kind of randomly place these again. Some shorter, some taller. And I think what I'm gonna do is just kind of work my way around just like I did before, I guess. thought I was going to try something a little bit different, but maybe not. I am folding the, the ends of the transfer up a little bit so they're not sticking to each other because that's what I ran into before. So that should help. 
Um, if they're really sticky and they're stuck together, chances are when you hold them over to bring them over to your sink and run them under the water, um, they unstick pretty easily. You just kind of have to be gentle and pull them apart. Yeah, that's going to work better. There's three, and there's number tree number four. So got all different sizes here. Some of them are overlapping a little bit, and some of them aren't, and that's just fine. Okay, you ready? There we go. I'm just going to stand up and do this. I hope you guys don't mind, but it's a lot easier and faster for me to work this way. So there's our first green. It's so funny, I did start exactly where I started before. And there's number one. Oh, it looks so cute. And I'm going to do number two as well, and then I'm going to dry those. I love that they overlap a little bit. You could even do another round of this with a, a deeper green. It would look really pretty. dry those for a sec. Can you see how pretty they're looking? Oops, sorry, upside down. There we go. <laughs> All right, I'm going to bring number one and number two back over here and try to do those quickly. I'm pushing them down with my green thumb again. And back in with the chalk. The reason I'm kind of skipping around like this is because I'm trying to keep the uh, transfers wet while I'm working with them. need to use them a third time I believe. There. Now I'm going to go back here and get these two done. These are a lot of trees. looking really cool you guys it looks very um, like something you'd see at Pier 1 or Pottery Barn maybe okay we'll dry those a little bit my fingers a little So what kinds of things would you keep in this box? What would you keep in this box? Alright, let's go back 
Can be there again. This one's getting a little taller than the other ones were. So I'm gonna make the little one, the next one, a little bit shorter. Not gonna fit that one in right now, though. This is a bigger tree for some reason. dry that for a sec. This is taking a little longer than I thought it would. Uh, look at it. It's so pretty. It's going to be worth it. Worth the effort. we got two more we need to put in. Swipe off those green fingers for a little second or two. It's, <laughs> it's really staying. Okay. I just need two more little trees and then we are done with them. Put you here. And I'll put this one beside it and that will be it. And go. Last two. Get this one. And this one. We have completed our forest. Okay. So guess how much I paid for this in 19... I'm going to say 89. It's been around for a long time. Guess how much the ticket is on the bottom. Okay, so I'll just give you a quick peek at how that looks. All the way around, you've got our beautiful trees. Where did I end? I should, oh, right there. I should dry this for a second. Okay, looks good. I'm gonna put my green away for now. I think I'm going to need that again. And we're going to play with those little woodland animals a little. Because they're very cute. And again, we have a bunny and we have a moose. And I'm just going to dance these around the bottom part of the, of the uh, box. Hey, Annie, how are you? Just in time. We're finishing up this project. We have a little bit more to do. But it's coming out pretty sweet. So I'm going to fuzz these up really well. I'm going to be layering these on top of areas that I've already chalked before. So you want to make sure that your transfer is like barely sticky. Actually, I'm going to stick these on my pants and pick up a little bit of that lint too. 
Um, sometimes my, t my towel just doesn't feel like it's doing its job well enough. It's probably because I've used it to death, right? Annie, are you out in your she shed tonight? Hope you're staying warm out there. All right, we're good. So this is the box that we've been working on. It's just a round box that I've had around for a long time. It was this color on the outside too, but I painted it. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a few of these little woodland animals all the way around the bottom. There's one spot that I wanted to cover up that I smudged. I'm gonna put the bunny right there because that should take care of it. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna put that on. And for that one, I'm gonna be using a camel, which is like a, a, a light brown. It's actually a caramel color. I love it. Looks like a butterscotch pudding to me. And it's pretty nice. And I'll need a small squeegee. We're ready to go. Let's cover up this bunny. I'm not pushing too, too hard on this, just as much as um, the stickiness of the transfer can pull up the chalk paste, too much pressure can also. So there's our little bunny in the forest. Let's go add a moose a little further along. I figured we put about I don't know, five of these, five or six of them around the bottom. And there's our moose. Just very lightly rub those transfers down. And don't put super lot of pressure on your on your um, squeegee when you're chalking with layers. Simple. Sweet. I can do another bunny before I dry it. I better dry these quick. Thank you, Cindy. Too cold in the she shed. Aw, oh, sorry. They look pretty cute on there, don't they? All right, let's do some more. Let's get another bunny. Maybe a bunny and a moose. Maybe one or two more. Let's get the bunny. And you can put these anywhere. I'm just kind of randomly using them. Put the bunny there. We'll put the moose over here. Further, probably have room for two more. Wasn't sure how many we'd get on here. This box really feels bigger than I expected it to be when I got started. Okay, there's our bunny. Just this box would be a great gift for somebody. Don't even have to put a present in it. Oops, I need a little more, a little more right here. Sometimes when your transfer starts to dry with the chalk on it, you have to re-moisten it a little bit. Let's see if that's better. Come on, you guys. It really doesn't want to stick right there. Got it. Worst case scenario, you, you can clean these off and and start but we just redo them. Just go right over what you already did. Okay. Okay, I think I want to put uh, two more animals on this side of, maybe just, well, actually, yeah, I need two more animals right over here. I don't want to use these transfers again while we are live because I have to clean them 
And you guys don't want to sit through that again, unless you want to. I can do that too. But I will put them away for now while we finish up the top of this box, which is super, super cute. We did a little border around the top edge. I am covered with green chalk paste. You know what I'll do? I'm just going to spray my hands with some water and clean them up a little bit. Might make a bigger mess. You never know. Yanni, we were just talking about your, your glitter friend, Kathy. <laughs> okay, so this is the top that we made a little bit earlier. We put the, um, the design all the way around the top edge, and it's going to go right on here. Look how cute that looks. Look how cute. This will make a great gift. But we're going to put a ribbon on the top, too, because it needs one. It needs a little happiness there, right? Okay, so... I'm going to grab my ribbon stuff. I'm going to put this to the side for now. And this is the ribbon that I have that matches the best. It's not perfect, but I think it'll pass. And I'm going to show you how my mama taught me how to make a bow. I am no expert, but I try. All right, I'm just going to pull a lot of this out. And I'm going to start by... Wrapping it around my hand. I'm gonna figure out how big I want it first. I want it, I want it to be pretty big. Okay, so about this big, I'm guessing. Let me just size it up a little bit, maybe a little bit more. Okay, so right about there. That's gonna be the size of the loop that I'm gonna start with. I'm gonna say it's about 10 inches. So I'm gonna do about um, five, maybe six loops all the way around. Usually I do this with with my hand inside of it. I don't know why it's a little bigger than usual, so it's a little harder to manage. But you can also fold it and do it like this. Let's just do it that way. Thanks, Annie and Cindy. We're not done yet. This is gonna be so cute. What would you guys put in this box? Would you keep it for ornaments or would you give it as a gift? Let's see how many loops I got. One, two, three, four, five. One more time around, I think. Six. All right, so I am going to leave a bit extra on the end so I can pull out a tail. So I, essentially, I've just made even loops all the way around. And what my mom used to do is she would find the center of the loops and she'd sniff them. So you find the center, you just kind of fold it. And because this is wired, it is even easier to work with. So I fold it in half and I know where the center is. So I'm just going to cut two little like um, V shapes. Why V shapes? I don't know. I don't know why she didn't just cut a slit, but she always made a V, a v there. So that's what I'm going to do too. Mama knows best, right? Just try not to cut all the way through it. It can happen, really. Okay, so I've got those, and I have a pipe cleaner right here, which is a little bit too big. I really should have turned my glue gun on, but I forgot. Let me plug my glue in. So I'm going to take the pipe cleaner and wrap it around from the front to the back, like so, and just twist it really, really tight. And hope for the best, because as I said, I'm not an expert bow maker by any means. So I'm going to pull the tail out that I started with, which is right in the middle. And then starting from the inside, you pull the loops up and then down, up and then down. So up down and up and down and then you do the same thing on the other side so she would start going down and then up on the other side those scissors are awesome <laughs> they're really good scissors 
Okay, so we have our bow started. And of course you're gonna to wanna to fluff it and rearrange it a little bit. I love wired ribbon, it's so much easier to make bows with. So where does this one go? This one looks like it goes up, not down. Okay, so we gotta play with that a little bit. And when you get to the ends of the tails, you're gonna fold your ribbon in half and starting at the Outside, you're going to cut upwards, like an upward V. Just cut it straight this way. And that's how you get that little uh, little forked tail. This one, I'm going to do the same thing. Done. And we're going to pop this right on the top of our cute little box that we've been working hard on just like this. So I'm going to glue that down so that it doesn't move too much, but let me turn it so that you can see how pretty this is. Okay, let me do this. Let me just move my camera this way. There we go. So I'm going to glue this to the center, but this is what it looks like all done. I'm missing a couple animals there. I have to go back and finish those. Right there. I'm missing some animals. But there we have our little um, cute little woodland box. I think this is so cute. So if you are interested in this transfer, it is called Fa La La. There are pieces on it that I did not even get a chance to use that you absolutely could. But what a beautiful little decor decorative piece for your house or um, as a gift. Just you just give the box as a gift or you can fill it with something fun or store your um, favorite mementos from the holidays, ornaments. Um, the ones that you don't want the kids getting into, they look great in this box. I'm just going to pull it over here. My light's better. Oh. I should ask Santa for a light ring. There, that's a little better. Not quite so glary. We've got little moose and we've got bunnies dancing around the bottom. And that is how you can decorate a box. You could use it as a Christmas present. It's, it's a gift in itself. All right, so I'm gonna put my website up here. This transfer again is called Fa La La. Fa La 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 La, sing it, Fa La La La. And I used um, Dune chalk paste. I used uh, Shimmer Olive, and I also used the other color, which should be right here. The heck? Oh, there it is. It is called Camel. I always want to call it caramel, but it's camel. So I want to thank you guys for watching. It was great spending my Thursday night with you. And thank you, Charlene. And um, tomorrow I'm going to be back with another fun project. It might be a workshop if I can get my act together in time. Um, but I would like to present um, a really fun idea that I've got for a countdown to Christmas. So you want to tune in tomorrow night. Hopefully my husband will be home on time and it'll be at 7 p.m. All right, have a wonderful night. If you have any questions, message me. I'll be happy to answer your questions. And uh, fa la 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 la, want soul. Charlene, you got it, babe. I have one in stock, and I need to see you because I have your Thanksgiving turkey still. Okay, all right, that's all for tonight. Have a wonderful rest of your night, and I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye now.